In this video, we're going to look at how you can use the new visual calculations feature that came out as part of the February update. We're going to look at how to enable it, its basic usage, as well as some considerations to bear in mind if you want to start using this. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So visual calculations is a feature that essentially lets you write your DAX functions in a visual level. So if you're just starting in Power BI, writing DAX, especially you know in consideration with the semantic model, can get a little bit tricky, just because when you have to write them, and you put them in a visual, they can react a little bit differently based on sort of what the filters that you applied on your visuals and how it interacts with um, everything else in your model. That all gets simplified with this new visual calculations feature, which essentially just lets you reference any values, columns or calculations that you use in your visuals as part of your calculation. So you don't need to worry about, you know, where it's stored in which table you just, you know, you be able to do simple arithmetic and calculations based on the actual data that you are using on the visuals themselves. If you want to use the new visual calculations feature, you need to make sure that you are on the February uh, 2024 version of the Power BI desktop or later. And you also need to make sure that you enable this in the preview features because it is a preview feature as of this month. So to go and enable it, you just need to click the cog icon on the bottom right. And then from the preview features here, you just need to make sure that you tick the visual calculations option here, restart your Power BI desktop, and you will know when you uh, have this enabled by having this new option here in the calculations, this one with an FX. So here we're looking at a sample report that I'm using. It's the typical Northwind data sets. And what we're showing in this bar chart here is essentially the total amount of sales on a month by month basis for the history of the company. And this is what we're going to use for our demo today, just to show you how the visual calculations look like. We're not going to go through the model itself and explain to you how it's built because it's, it's pretty simplistic, but I will leave a link to it as well to download it in my usual links in the description box below. So to start using visual calculations, you need to first select a visual. So we'll select this visual. And what you'll notice is when I select that, the new calculation button now like stops being grayed out. So you can click on it, uh, which means that you can start writing your visual calculations. So when you click on it, what it will do is it will do a few things. So it will create this it will open up this view here at the bottom where um, it gives you a representation of your visual, but on a table view, you will have, uh, you'll notice here on the field well on the right hand side, you will have a new section here for your visual calculation. And you'll note that it's a visual calculation by having this icon next to it. And then you will also have the formula bar, which is the typical DAX formula bar that you are familiar with. So you can write, this is where you will write basically your visual calculations. I'm going to go back because I just want to show you the, so there's that way, which is to click the new calculation button here at the top, but you can also do it from the Y axis here. I believe if you do an add data, you will see this new option, new calculation, which basically does the same thing. So if you don't know where to get started, the Power BI team has created a few templates that you can start using right away. I um, mean, just need to replace some of its values to get started. So to find those templates, you just need to click the FX button here on next to the formula button. And what it will do is it will give you a list of all the different templates of calculations that you could use. So running some moving average versus previous, you know, things like this. So we're going to use one as an example here just to demonstrate to you how the visual calculations work. So we're going to select uh, running sum, which if you don't know, it's just a cumulative sum of your values in your visual itself. So in this case, what it's done when I clicked it is it re it populated the the measure or that the, our visual calculation with the right formula for the running sum. So first we're gonna well you can rename it. We'll just leave it to running sum for now. And what it's done here is um, it's created a place here the field placeholder. So that means that we can refer to a field that we are using in this visual. So we're going to circle back to this later because it's important to know. So what we'll do is we'll refer to the sales 
value in our visual here and we're going to hit enter. And as you can see, what it's done is it's created a new axis here on the Y axis, which is a cumulative sum of all of the kind of total sales that we have um, over time on this month axis, which is great because it actually works exactly as you would expect without needing to worry about, you know, how it's connected to the calendar table, things like this. So visual calculations, unlike the typical measures that we have, live in the visuals themselves. So when we created that visual calculation, it just simply lives on our Y axis here and not on the semantic model itself. So typically you would have your, you know, your measures in your measures table, but visual calculations don't follow the same concept. So they live in the visuals just on the visuals itself. So what that means is that it can only be referenced in the visual. So why am I babbling about this visual? So let me give you an example. So first of all, let's edit this visual calculation that we created. So let's go here and click edit calculations. So that will just bring up the visual calculation that we've just created. And let's say we are in a scenario where we just want to show the running sum visual calculation, not the sales, but we can't remove the sales column because that's what the visual calculation uses. So to be able to use that column while at the same time and not show it in a chart, you have this option to hide or show those values in your visual. So in this case, if you hide that, you will just see the running sum in this chart, which is kind of what we wanted. So we wanted to show the, the running sum without the sales month on month. And this actually neatly segues us to some of the considerations that you should be thinking about if you want to start using this new visual calculations feature. So the first thing, as I mentioned, is that the visual calculations live in the visuals by themselves. So for example, being able to write a, a running sum calculation is super simple because you didn't need to worry about, you know, how to calculate it on a month by month basis and how to present it on a visual, you know, just using the running sum DAX function in the visual calculation works. However, if you need to reuse the calculation for the running sum in a different visual, for example, you won't be able to do that. And that's because obviously this visual calculation lives just in this visual, which makes it a little bit difficult if you want to reuse these kind of calculations that you are using. So just bear that in mind if you want to use visual calculations. So for me personally, I see some use cases for this visual calculation for any instances I have where I just need the calculation, a simple calculation in one of the visuals that I know that I will not reuse on any other visuals. Um, but otherwise, I kind of prefer to have my measures reusable and kind of searchable in the measures table in the semantic model because I just find it a lot neater that way. The next thing is that uh, visual calculations, although work on you know the majority of the visuals that you would use, it doesn't work on all the visual types that exist. So I remember testing this out and uh, when I tried to use use it in combo charts, for example, it just wouldn't let me, which I'm sure it's going to be kind of cleaned up and, and, and made available in the future. But as of now, uh, we're using bar charts, pie charts, uh, these kind of common charts. They do work on those visuals, but not on all types of visuals. So the next consideration is with regards to formatting and how much options you have when it comes to formatting your, your calculations. So with measures or at least how they function at the moment, when you click from the semantic model, you have these, you know, combination of tools that you can use to customize your measure and change some of its properties. So things like formatting, you know, how many decimal places, what type of data category it is, you know, these type of, of properties. Now, because of where the visual calculations live, they live in the field wells on the visuals, you don't have the same option. So you might have or run into some cases where you want to show a different type of value or format it a different way. So at the moment, there is no there's no way to do it, uh, at least from the UI that you get. The only way that you can do it right now is by using the format function, which works well in most cases, but you just need to know how to use the format function. And one last thing to be aware of is how you refer to the values in the visuals when you're creating calculations. So when we wrote the running sum, I'm going to just go back to it again, just to show you what it's doing 
doing is it's basically just referring to the sales column that is in the visual table, which makes sense, right? But that is actually tied to the name of the column itself um, in the visual. So what that means is that, or rather, when you bring values, measures, columns into visuals, you can actually change the display names and not exactly what they are shown in the model. So let's say I change this to um, total sales. Uh, what you'll notice is that you will start to get an error in your calculation on your visual calculation. And that's because the, the reference that you use in the visual calculation is the display name, not the actual name of that value in your semantic model. So when those things change, the reference that you have in your visual calculation must also change. And unlike how it works in semantic model, it doesn't just change automatically for you. So as you can see here, it's just giving us a red squiggly line, which means that we need to, you know, just make that naming convention consistent. So we'll just say total sales and you will be okay again. So that should work. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start using this visual calculations feature and understand some of its limitations, at least for now, if you're considering using this. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.